I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Working Class Halls podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Carter. Hello, up, brother. How are you, dude? Uh, hanging in, hanging in. My kid is finally uh, shitting in the toilet every Ooh. like fifth time, so that's cool for me. Yeah, uh, that's my ratio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That being said, we have a really great guest this week. As always, we have great guests, but this guy, especially great for our brand, the working class whole brand. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, me, and that, me and this guy have done a VFW gig together, so you know yeah. that him and I are on the same wavelength of, yeah. of life. <laughs> the one and only Chris Faga. Chris. What's going on? What's your worst day job? My worst day job? I, I did paid petitioning for the Democratic Party when I was 18 years old. It's oh. probably the worst one I had. Oh. Uh, okay. And Can they you would explain say, what this yeah. is to the audience so they know so, the ins and outs of what that is? If you, when you're 18 in New York City, somebody will come up to you and be like, are you registered to vote? And if you say no, they're like, if you register to vote, I will give you a job that is this much more than whatever the minimum wage was. So I got ten dollars an hour, and it was off the books because it's it's not technically a job. There's, there's all these like loopholes with fucking political campaigns. Yeah, of course. Oh shit. So be like, if you register as a Democrat, I'll give you this job for ten dollars an hour, which at the time the minimum wage was five dollars an hour. You know what I mean? So I'm like, oh, that's good. Economics. <laughs> it's huh? called economics, boys yeah. and girls. So I'm like, all right, that's a decent fucking gig. That's right a double now. jump, yeah. yeah. And uh, they go, so, <laughs> sounds so shady, though, but it's right? like I look like this, so they were just like, oh, we're just gonna dump this kid in the hood because all these because it's like I, you get there and it's like yeah. all these like, kind of like nerdy people, of course, and they're just like see me and they're like, they're there for the cause, man. Yeah, we're getting people to sign up. You're there because you're like. This makes sense for my bottom Economically, line. yeah. And then they just go... Yeah, I remember they called my house and they were like, oh, uh, uh, your, uh, my grandmother picked up and they were like, yeah, he offered to volunteer. And she was like, there's no way my grandson offered to volunteer <laughs> for anything. I just love how people... like My people, we know my lineage is not trying to donate yeah. anything. And play, we get mad at you if you were. Yeah. <laughs> you, she, don't she like you don't like to eat? <laughs> Eddie, you don't like it. She doesn't trust it at all. She's yeah. like, get off my stoop. <laughs> You're lying. <laughs> There's no way my grandson would do this. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so they would just dump me in like Jamaica, like in the middle of nowhere. Please, I didn't know. This is before smartphones. Yeah. I, I couldn't find the train if I had to. Oh, They're man. like, meet us at this spot. I'm like, you mean that chicken place with all the bulletproof glass? Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I want to meet you there. Yeah, like, yeah. It no seems shit. like a different type of meeting place. <laughs> oh, man. So what do you got to... What is the way that they calculate your work so they don't? They, it's, so basically, it's like you don't. They so they they have walk sheets. So like they know who all the registered voters are. So if you just make up names or if you like sign things and like, they so they can like check it again. You don't have a walk sheet. You just have a list of addresses. They oh. then have a walk sheet. It's like if none of your names are the names that are supposed to be there, they just go, oh, you are you you made these up, and they just fucking disqualify them. So you go door to door? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought it was one of those guys no. standing on the corner. Like, can I talk to you for a second? No, no, no. You know no, those no. guys? I literally rang a dude's fucking bell once, and this dude came out, no shirt, angry. I was working for the Alan Hevesy campaign, who ended up being an incredibly corrupt comptroller in New York. <laughs> I was like, I thought it was hilarious. But I rang this guy's, I rang this guy's bell, and this guy comes out, fucking half hair braided, no shirt, just like, what you want? And I was like, I'm working for the Alan Hevesy campaign. He was like, this is my fucking name. Hennessy, run of a mayor. <laughs> and I was like, I, I go to correct him and say Hevesy again. And he goes, hey, yo, come down here. It's a motherfucking name, Hennessy, run of a mayor. Sign this motherfucker's petitions. I would just use that the whole time. Like, I got everybody sign up. <laughs> Might want to change his name on the poster down to Hennessy. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling around, you got a big like XO shirt. You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> you thought about fermenting grapes. <laughs> That's just so oh, fucking funny. So what did anything like crazy? Happen? I mean, people like people would literally just like open the door with a knife in their hand and be like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Like, just like it's like just because people would be fucking with you. I was like this fucking 18 year old white kid fucking walking around yeah. like the hood, and then they would send me to fucking Jewish neighborhoods, and that was. Like I would go to some Orthodox Jewish neighborhood sometimes and like even like Hasidic Ooh. and it's like it's always like the women answer the door and they go, first of all, this is a funny thing. People think that Jews vote Democrat. 
they're registered Democrats, but they, but they all vote, vote Republican. Yeah, they're all Republicans. Like, yeah, when yeah. You, when you, Why are they registered Democrats? Though? Because you, it's just what you do if yeah. you're Jewish. Huh. And like you just always vote Republican yes. because of taxes. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, it's like that, especially like the religious communities, they all vote, but they're all registered Democrats. It's like a weird thing that they, I don't know why. I don't know. So but, that's like right over by like South Williamsburg, right? That, that area there? This was Because that's I, I used in, to like, live right over there. But with I was in, Yeah, but I was like deeper in like Midwood. Oh, like, okay. You know what I mean? That that part was more like orthodox, but there is some Hasidics there. And but like I remember, there was this little kid, and I'm walking, I'm doing this petitioning thing in this neighborhood, and there's this little kid, uh, cute little kid, little Jewish kid, fucking yarmulke, big bright eyes, like cute kid, and he just goes, "Hey, are you Jewish?" And I was like, "No." And he just goes, "Do you steal from people?" And his mom just starts nervously. It was the only signature I got for like three hours. <laughs> she just nervously signed the thing. She says, yeah. <laughs> Crazy kids. Oh, so, uh, we don't uh, teach them that. I don't know where he gets this. <laughs> you have a whole school telling them that all the infidels yeah. are stealing. <laughs> Dude, I did. I so I I've had to do petitioning for my because I'm a county committeeman in Brooklyn, so I had to do petitioning again for myself. Like over the last few. Wait, years. you're a what? Repeat wait, wait, this? what? Repeat it's this? not a real thing. I just do it for the jokes. But what is what? What, what, do you, what are you <laughs> doing? Nothing. Again? I have a bit about it. Nothing happens. I've gone to all of the meetings, and it's just people. It's a lot of people who become county committeemen thinking they're going to affect change, and then they get really mad when they find out they're not. So you're a county committeeman for Brook for, for Brooklyn for my for my neighborhood. What for neighborhood? My, it's like my block. It's oh, like every block. Oh, has, every like, block. The has districts one. are very small. Like okay. you know what I mean. So it's like uh, I, I live in Kensington, Brooklyn, and like, but like I go to these meetings, nothing. But I remember the first time they were like, "Hey, do you want to?" I just like looked it up. I was like, "That's a." I was like, "That's a resume point," and I'm sure I will. Oh get, yeah, I'll get material out of this. Oh yeah, yeah. And if like, you have the free time, dude, I have done. <laughs> I have done hours of podcasts on this. Like you know what I mean? Really? I just go to one and write. I write notes and like I like live tweet it and make fun of it and like. I then just come in and do I can do an hour podcast on how stupid and nonsensical it is because literally like like I said there was a Zoom meeting. That what is your week. job as a county? Like what is it they tell you're, you you're supposed to be? You're doing? supposed to vote on various like measures and stuff, and sometimes you break ties for like what the party stance is on things. But literally, I, this is my third term. They do two year terms, dude. And is your every picture hanging up in a bar. There's a couple of meetings. That, dude, yeah. The sash. It's just Chris. No, I show. I just like this to the man. Hand is going around. I just. Third term. Dude, the la my last Chris meeting, Vegas. I was Third brown term. bagging it. I got drunk in the back of the thing, <laughs> and while people were arguing, I started doing the South Park thing. I started going, Rabble! Rabble, Rabble! <laughs> like, I was just like, and they didn't even throw me out. There has to be enough guys to be so mad at you over that. Like, we need them. No, nobody even said anything. Because like, you have tenure. Because <laughs> so you have tenure. <laughs> Everybody's just so burnt out. Like, does, uh, there's anybody that takes it, like, super seriously? You know, actually, a guy I went to high school with is there. He takes it seriously, but he knows I'm not going to yes. take it seriously <laughs> yeah. because he knows me. He goes, Chris, what are you doing here? I go, isn't this hilarious? <laughs> he just goes, what? That's one of the issues that come like, up. Like I literally go, do you want a beer? He yeah. Was, yeah, he was younger than me in school. I was like, you want a beer, Dave? And he was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll have a beer. Fuck, yeah. this sucks. He's like, he literally goes to me, he goes, he goes, eventually this committee is going to run into a conservative judge and they're just going to be like, Brooklyn does not need a Democratic County Committee, and they're just going to disband this thing because yeah. it's not like a real thing, and it just yeah. it's an embarrassment to local politics. Because there was a nine, there was like no, it was like a twelve-hour Zoom meeting. It was my first meeting during COVID, and it was like a blizzard outside. So it's just like, all right, I'm here. I had it on Zoom the whole, and I was just in the chat, like being like. This is anarchy and posting clips from ECW anarchy rules. <laughs> People were getting fucking it was, dude. That was the funniest one because there was a parliamentarian. Who and they, people were calling him like you know because it's all this is the whole thing it's old Jews arguing with young hipsters that's the whole thing in this thing uh, uh -huh. and fucking just a bunch of other people going oh I thought this was gonna be a real thing and it's just what we thought it was gonna yeah. be. you know what I mean and so like there's these people screeching that this guy who's like doesn't have his camera on is a white supremacist and she's like this is you're just you're advocating white supremacy blah, blah. mind you this is a proceeding to change the rules of county committee rule like meetings. And this it went it gets twelve that to fourteen. Far oh off. Dude, my god! It, yeah. It's just committee. You're you're not even affecting anyone outside of the committee. It, yeah, and dude, I'm telling you, we haven't got past that. <laughs> oh my god! Three terms. Just oh you bureaucrats. God. You guys take up so much time with dude, your hookers and like your coke. For, I don't get and your paid beers. For this. It's just funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. We're talking dude. about it now. <laughs> it's so like, good. But it's like so. It's like I'm in this meeting and they're just oh, calling this guy a white supremacist. Like he turns his camera on for one second. I'm talking about bow tie nation of Islam, a quilt map of Africa on the wall behind him. And he goes, I am supposed to be impartial in these proceedings, but I will not be called a Nazi or a white supremacist. I will call an end to this meeting and immediately turns off his camera. Wow. 
Wow. And I'll tell you, this is how that, dumb. That's a mic drop. This is how dumb I am, right? So I go, parliamentarian, man. Like, I'm like thinking about it. Like, that's a cool job. How come they never told us about that in high school? That guy went to my high school. <laughs> I mean, you're older than me. <laughs> the, the Muslim the Islam guy did? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it sounds like just you and your high school are on this the is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a made up thing from your high school? Well, Brooklyn Tech, a lot of people get involved, you know? I love that. I fucking love being involved in the community. Do you? No. <laughs> I like <laughs> walking around yeah. and you know saying hello. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 like I want to be more of a those. block captain. Yeah, situation. I want to be like a like a per, like a personality hire yeah, yeah. for the committee. Like, oh hey, this guy's a great guy. I don't show up to anything. <laughs> well, you yeah, you don't have to, as long as you don't have to read any of the emails. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to do anything. Yeah. Like I remember being in uh, these like, adult survivors of child abuse meetings, and they always want you to. Anybody want to volunteer to read the? opening prayer adult or survivor of child you mean adults so no um when you are an adult and you've been abused as a child uh Is they have a boy group. situation no they for me no it was like uh people like that knew me that fuck with me but it's just everyone who's been fucked with they all meet for this big meeting it was awesome like for the AA. first two it's years kind of like an aa well, it, it, kind of thing. yeah it's a support oh, yeah, group okay. it's yeah, a support yeah. group yeah I mean, after two years, I had to get out of there. Like, I got my help, but it's hard to hear some of the stories every day. Yeah. But I remember wanting to, you know, who wants to read these these truths? Like, oh. the, you know, you have to read oh, the dude, prayer I, and I, all those things. I've been all the AA I'm right there, standard. baby. I'll re first oh, you day, read, no, I'll, you I'll read, read them. Yeah. yeah, man, I want to be part of the community. I don't uh -huh. want to do anything besides that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to be able to go to the happy hour if someone buys me a drink. I went to, uh, I, was going, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to Narcotics Anonymous when I was 15. Uh, and I'm just in there with a bunch of like heroin addicts and uh, what were you there for? Weed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> weed what a crack. What a homo. <laughs> I was 15. Yeah, I was in there for weed. Uh, Did your mom make you go? My dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, what an I mean, asshole your so dad smart is. His oh, life was he flipped he up saw the head. writing on the wall, dude. dude we, we got we. He got there just a little too early. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what, you know. Four years later, I was like, oh, that's when I should have said him. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I got into all the uh, like the government. Mm -hmm. You do like the um, I don't know. It was all those meetings, and yeah, it's just such. People just jerking themselves oh, off. They yeah. love it. Oh, my oh, they God. love it. It's, oh, it's like, God. what are we doing here? It's the worst. I was a 15 year old kid. I was like, this is stupid. Yeah. I, like, I could see through it. I'm like, well, you guys are just. It's ego maniacal. It's, yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. yeah. It's just a bunch of narcissists who don't actually want to do anything. Yeah. And they don't want to, they don't want to call themselves that. So they, they, it's like they put the guise of, of community work. It's like religious fuckers who just want yeah. to be worshiped. But uh, I'm doing it in the name of the Lord. At least you're not burning like city money. No, 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 yeah, no, no, because, really. just 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 a because fun I'm sure. No, I'm sure there's some amount. Because think about it. It is like you have to petition. You're on a ballot. Like it's like there is like a thing. It is like wasting resource. It yes. is dumb. Yeah. Paper like at least at the yeah, very minimum. Very it's wasting paper. <laughs> well, also these meetings. I'm sure. Like I didn't pay to go to this meeting. It just was free. It was in the Coney Island Amphitheater. That cost money. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's a, that parliamentarian probably got paid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so paid. there is some... Yeah, I mean, yeah. dude. Well, look at this uh, MTA thing. I, now I'm just going to derail the whole oh, thing. Oh, God. We started talking about the MTA. Sorry. I, yeah, I got yeah. three hours on how the MTA <laughs> sucks. <laughs> I mean, okay, let's... Okay, I, we, I, we I should know pull more, it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to know more about Chris's job situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... So did you have how, to wear a suit when you were going door to door? Would you wear no, door -door? no, no, street clothes, street clothes. So yeah. door to door oh, led you into this committee, kind of like no, life? twenty years later. But I just like uh, did. It. I, oh, I, I like literally found just, it and loved it. Yeah, like loved I just, making fun of it. Yeah. So I like Googled it and I was like, oh, this is like funny. And then I just like I had to go back and petition again. I remember the first. So it wasn't my block where I was doing. It was like a couple, and I only had to get one petition signature the first time I did it. And I rang the first guy's bell and I was like, hey, I'm running for county committee. And like everybody in my building will just sign it now because they know me. Yeah. They're just like, I don't give a fuck. Here you go. And like, uh, well, not white people. All the black people in my building are like, "Here you go, Chris." <laughs> like, it's like they're all way nicer people. Like, I'm just gonna throw that out. There. Like, white people are like, you ask them for, like, oh, and it's like every black person's like, "What's this for?" And I explain how it's stupid, and they go, "Then why are you doing it?" And I'm like, "It's funny," and they're like, "Okay," yeah. and like every time. But like, uh, I rang this guy's bell uh, in fucking Brooklyn, and just like this guy opens it, I was like, "Yeah, I'm running for committee, a county committee. You mind uh, signing my petition so I can get on the ballot?" And he goes, "I don't know anything about your politics." I was like, "I bet." You don't know what a county committee does. And he just goes, I, I do. And I go, tell me. And he just goes, no. And slams the door <laughs> in my face. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not going to lose this. I'm just going to shut my door. 
Well, I painted myself into a corner, so now I'm just going to take my ball and go home. What jobs do you do where you have the time to sit in a county committee meeting? Uh, podcasting. Uh, <laughs> oh, awesome. Bar- bartending one day a week. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah. a real working class job. Yeah, bartender. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the I world w- needs bartenders. <laughs> how, long you been, how long have you been done in bar? I honestly, I hadn't worked in the service industry for over seven years, and my buddy was managing this place in Chelsea. And he calls me. and He goes, he goes, hey, I kind of took over this. Like, he's a free. My buddy's a Freemason, and one of the older guys, his like dad died, and he was like, yeah, his dad was running this bar as like a clubhouse because he owns all these buildings. The guy's rich, and he's just like, he kind of wants it to stay a bar in like honor of his father. So he's like, I'm like managing this place, uh, and he's oh, like, I just no. need somebody this that can is work. Like a nightmare situation. Yeah. Nobody, oh yeah, we ended up not. Staying there that long but he goes, yeah. I imagine this place I need somebody to work One day a week Who can work alone And not steal And I go fine I'll do it And we did it for a little while And it was like Wasn't great And then like He ends up fighting with this guy But he ends up getting this job At this bar That's right by my house Called Shenanigans In Brooklyn Nice And like uh, My grandfather used to drink there And he goes Hey like t- They need a Tuesday guy You were already working Tuesdays Do you want to work Closer to the house You'll make more money And I was like Yeah Like I'll work at that bar And it's just fucking It's kind of great yeah. Like like working yeah. at a dive bar, sure. like literally people come in and they're yeah, like, regulars. "Can you make me yeah. this?" And I go, I look around and I go, "I don't think so." Yeah, like I can like literally on the Fourth of July, I was like, I threw I threw a no ring death match show on the Fourth of July <laughs> at the bar. <laughs> Didn't even ask the owner. I just kind of <laughs> did it. I just did it, but it was a shit show. Like in the bar, like it was crazy. And so there's all these these five girls come up to the bar, and I'm like swarmed. I'm like walking on high life bottles. That's how busy it was. Like I, I just wow. couldn't even like clear shit because you're by yourself. I had my buddy like help me a little bit, and like these how girls go. How packed does it get? That day got packed. It does sometimes get. We have like nights that get very busy, and like sometimes because it's like it's the cheapest bar around, okay. and like it's like where f- like everybody that works there is now friendly. It's not like so. That's it's a typical. bar where you and start it, your morning when you're an alcoholic, or a bar to. where you end your night after yes. you've been out all yeah. night, or spending a lot of money, or if it's your happy hour bar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like okay. it's like, yeah. or if you're just going in there to like bullshit or play darts. You know yeah. what I mean? Like for a couple of drinks. So you got like old rummies and people in suits and like girls and then, like, coming young, in. Yeah, 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 younger yeah. younger what girls. It, this is uh this is in Kensington. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but like, yeah, it's like, so this day, there was this, uh, on 4th of July, it's fucking slammed. These four, five, like, cute young girls are like, can we have, like, <laughs> five Long Island iced teas? And I looked at them Long and went, Island absolutely iced not. Tea. Figure out what you want. And I just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's part of the experience, woke yeah. people. Uh, yeah. uh, that it's, like a theme, so, it's like a theme bar. It yeah. sounds so much fun. Guy from Brooklyn <laughs> tells you to go fuck yourself. I go tell your buddies back at college. <laughs> I got fucking. I was like, there was one night. So you give out. We have we have a trivia night, and I cover that sometimes. And like, uh, somebody like ordered. You get free round of shots, well shots if you win a round. And somebody ordered a round of shots of gin, and I looked him right in the face and went, "Who the fuck shoots gin?" Shots of gin. And oh. the guy was like mortified. I was like, "I'm just fucking with you, bud." And I just yeah. poured them because I realized like I actually upset a person. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I just was like kind of like half in the bag You're and went, doing "Who the your fuck job? shoots oh, gin?" Oh, you can drink on the job too. Oh yeah, that's oh crazy. those that's places. The whole job, yeah, 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 yeah totally. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and now what's and then like what's the snack situation there? Is there food well, or we is have it just pizzas from a place called the Pizza Network in Long Island? Uh huh. And okay. it's run by an old Italian lady, and uh-huh. she calls up and goes, "Hey, this is Linda from the Pizzas. <laughs> Do you guys need new pizzas? <laughs> new pizzas <laughs> from the meaning pizzas. that when we deliver them, they last until they're gone. Yeah, they're so yeah, it could be that day. Yeah. It could be the day yeah. after. It's true. <laughs> So now, are you heating them up? You have yeah, we have like so basically they didn't have that. The bar's in there ninety. It'll be ninety years next July. That's those, awesome. That bar yeah. food at those kind of bars. That's kind of like my favorite thing. Like it's just so man. It's like a high school lunch. They're, no, the, at, <laughs> oh, throw this out there. These are pretty decent frozen pizzas. Oh yeah, they, they give you like a pizza. Oh. The company gives you a pizza. Oven. It's like Crocodile Lounge in the East yeah, kinda, Village. Yeah. Oh, they give you an oven. They give you like a small oven and they're frozen oh, pizzas. Okay. And like I said, it's like they are like made by a small company. It's not gotcha. like a DiGiorno thing. Yeah. 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 So it's like, uh, so they're they're tasty, but it's I like it Lenny only was just... delivering already cooked pizzas, and you were just <laughs> open the box, take a slice if you like. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, from the one pizzas. drink gets you Dude, one slice. I, I drove these in from Long Island. <laughs> My grandfather dragged me Tell to me a bar. Tell me how long you need. How long are they gonna last? In Sheepshead on Avenue Z, this place called I think it's still there. It's called Log Cabin, and I remember I like had never gone in there, walked past it a hundred times, and my grandfather goes, "I'm drinking by your house at Log Cabin. Come have a beer with me." And I go, "All right, I'll walk down the block." Middle of the day, like, and I'm like, I think I was like 19. And fucking, uh, I walk in and beers are like three dollars. The pool table's fifty cents, and they have a steam table of free lunch. 
And I was like, is this what you motherfucking old bastards are doing yeah. in these bars? I called all my boys and we're like, hey, I know what we're doing in the middle of the day from now on. Yeah. <laughs> we're steam free table. lunch and getting free. Yeah, it was like, it was like you know, corned beef, brisket, maybe like a pasta, and then like wrapped sandwiches, like turkey sandwiches. It was free. And like $2 mugs of beer. There was a uh, there was a strip yeah, those club. Those bars always get it off the truck too. Like it falls off a truck, they know a guy that yeah, provides. It's so I love those kind of down places. in South Philly. There was a strip club that I used to go to during the, like the day, the afternoons, and they had all the dock workers would come. Wait, in is, the, is that place the Republican? No, it's called Pensport. Okay, it's right next to um, Show and Tell, okay. and there's also oh I heard of that place. Show Ryan Shaner. Uh, and sure. Danny Dubs I did Ryan's podcast And literally For the entire Patreon episode They just explained Dog shit Philly strip clubs to me <laughs> Dude Show and tell is insane Show and tell is like one I've of only those... been to cheerleaders I've never been anywhere oh, cheerle- else Cheerleaders They keep their They used to keep their tops on even Not when I was there. Oh they had tops off <laughs> Yeah oh yeah Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, um, Show and tell They'll do whatever You can have them Whatever the, you can afford You can br- And you can bring a keg in there Oh yeah, yeah I yeah, love yeah. those places <laughs> You can see Eddie <laughs> B-Y-O-B. Rolling a keg B-Y-O-B. in a show and tell <laughs> 12 o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday Because well, you could sell cups You could make money Oh yeah <laughs> Yeah totally Yeah it's totally BYB Like and it's wild too Like I used to go And that's, that was my time I used to go at night But it's so packed at night That I would just go in the morning yeah. Like while I'm still up with the cook You know what I mean I was <laughs> always a Tuesday strip club guy the Tuesday's best. the best so, Riviera There's always over one here. really smoking day. hot girl Yeah because she probably has like yeah. a kid she has to but pick up. It's just no, not a lot of dudes. And, yep. and if you are like going to be a good conversationalist and maybe put 20 bucks, yeah. you know, in yeah. the G-string, you're chatting her up. Yeah. yeah. If you can get more mileage, uh, you know, just by like not, you know, the the sharks. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I can get like a little chat time, yeah, that's yeah. got value, yeah. bro. Yeah. I'd yeah, rather talk to a stripper than like just keep fucking throwing 20s. Yeah. Dude, I remember I used to, yeah, we used to sit, I remember sitting in like a dive I'm here because no one talks to me. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> That's no, why I'm here, miss. No one talks to me. So I'm here to talk to you. I remember sitting in a dive bar on like a fucking Tuesday or a Monday or something with my buddies and I'm drinking a Heineken and I'm like, if we just go to the shitty strip club in Sunset, this beer is the same price and there's naked ladies. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. What were you saying about the Riviera? Because I've never been oh, there. Oh, Riviera? Right over I here. don't know how it is now, but I, I used to go there. I shot out in front of that joint. The girls are so hot. It's oh, like they, they have are? a portal to South America. In there. Oh. It's, it's, oh. Yeah. It, I, they used to be like, you, dude, you go in there on a fucking... Sometimes I'll see the workers like around during the day. And they work there. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, There's yeah. a lot of, like, queen strippers that live in this neighbor, of course, neighborhood. Of course, there's 10 strip clubs around yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I've never been in Riviera. Okay, interesting. So, interesting yeah, like, times. Riviera's used to be, like, it was, like... Take a pod there. It, it, yeah, we should. <laughs> they, they, got, they got work stories. Yeah, their whole business is <laughs> off of our guys. Yeah. <laughs> you're, telling me, you're telling me Buffy and <laughs> Champ are going in there from the Upper West? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. It's Longshoremen it's in there. A lot of girls Lou are, even and on a Gary's. Tuesday, there's a ton of girls, and they're hot, dude. Yeah. I remember they used to... I, like I said, you I by yourself, there. or you bring a buddy? I would, no, me and my buddies would like drive out for... Like, it was like, if we didn't want to go to the shitty strip club in Brooklyn, we'd like, all right, let's go to Queens. You know yeah. what I mean? Like It's like, but... Dude, that that was the best bang for your buck in strip clubs when I used to actually frequent strip clubs. That was the best to be able to be at a job... That was so dirtbag where they're like, let's hit the titty bar yeah, for yeah. lunch and go back to work. When I worked at the car lot, we'd be in the titty bar because it's attached yeah. to the car lot. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I would be I oh, would yeah. eating All my day. lunch in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you bring your paper lunch? My, read the paper? I the main <laughs> This is the sports section. <laughs> I've had multiple friends be like, I, like, I'll just be in Midtown and be like, hey, do you want to grab lunch or something? They'll be like, yeah, meet me at Rick's. Like, yeah. always, because yeah. they have like a lunch special yeah, and yeah, there's yeah. no cover during the day. Yeah. Oh, Rick's was great. Yeah. Is it Rick's still there? Yeah, it's gone yeah Rick's now, right? is definitely still yeah, there. Yeah, it is. Cabaret's By the way, there. one of the best stock plays I ever made was buying Rick's right after the IPO. Oh, <laughs> it whoa. spiked during the pandemic. Rick's Cabaret wow. did. Yeah. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah. Because it got bought by somebody else. Yeah, right? yeah Scores, yeah, yeah. I thought, owns it. Like the same company. Uh, Rick's, Rick's, Rick's had its own ticker symbol, and I mean, oh. like it was like it crazy job. And I forgot I bought it. I bought it like funny. Like I was like, that's hilarious. Rick's Cabaret has a fucking ticker symbol. Whatever your whole life is just from like good decisions you made, just solely for the joke. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's been a three-time <laughs> county committee man. He owns stock portfolios in every major titty bar and porn industry. Chris Fagan, everybody. <laughs> I just like the idea of Hager coming into like the the committee meeting. He's like, yeah, third term. He's got like just yeah, a yeah, bathrobe yeah. and uh, he's handing out those uh, <laughs> Jesus, you cigars. Know, he's like, hey, you know those strippers? They'll give I you like look at like Tony Soprano <laughs> feed the ducks. Yeah, but you take out of your pocket the the Rick's like free pass with your name on it. Like oh, this yeah. <laughs> gets you free admission to my spot, Rick's. Uh, 
I own 3% of Rick's. <laughs> I'm a stockholder. Yeah, that was my spot. Like 2010, 2012, like Rick's was my spot. So much so that like I would take people from work there. <laughs> and I'll never forget. Uh, but he was like, oh, you seem to know your way around here. I go, nah, I mean, I just come every once in a while. And like within 20 <laughs> seconds, a stripper came up to me and said, Eddie, and jumped in my arms and gave me a hug. I was like, hey, well, I, uh, I mean, she knows me. <laughs> We went to school together. <laughs> Eddie, she's my cousin. Our moms know each I've other. I've also never heard anyone call you Eddie. <laughs> oh, dude, that's that's my strip club name, Eddie. <laughs> that's his stripper name. <laughs> Every, even the customers have an alias. <laughs> where it's fucking Ed goes. So funny, dude. I remember. Yeah, we went to some strip club. My buddy Damien was one of these guys who always was in strip clubs, and we went to some strip club that no, supposedly none of us had ever been into. And we walk in. Two seconds, some girl comes up, was like, "What's up, Daddy?" She was, I know her from another club. Yeah. That's you, I mean, that is real though. If you yeah, are yeah. a yeah. Uh, degenerate strip club addict, you, the girls circulate, and yeah, especially yeah, like yeah. neighborhood. Like I'm a neighborhood strip club guy. Like that's my the times I went the most to strip clubs were in my neighborhood. Right? Yeah, but they're so there's like four of them. Yeah, in like a f- ten mile radius. So they all like oh, yeah. switch off. Yeah, so. and those girls are probably working like Tuesdays oh, here, yeah. Wednesdays there, Thursdays there. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. you drive for Uber and you drive for Lyft. Yeah. You don't just. Yeah, right. Yeah. You don't cut your dick off. <laughs> you got to earn. Spread it out. So you've never had like a manual labor job. Uh, and you look I mean, like I've a guy done, that I've should. I've been rigging electric for movies, which is difficult. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. Like that's yeah. a lot of lifting Were you in the shit. union? Or huh? like, oh, were you a union guy for that? Yeah, I do like overhire work for the union. My buddy's a best boy and he'll call me oh, for cool. that shit oh, sometimes. Oh, yeah. nice. So I, yeah, I'm, I'll always do. I'll do whatever. Like, I don't give a shit. So you have electrical knowledge because that's a big... No, it's no. just lifting heavy stuff and plugging shit in. Oh, okay. You ever bet on one of those things? No. It's just mooks. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just mooks. It's just gopher, <laughs> pick up that. No, it's like you do have to like, there's like very basic like electrical knowledge you need to have, but it's like you're not like, so like if you're shop electric, you're rewiring things if they break. Uh, but like if you're ringing electric, you just, like I remember I, there was a guy who had way more experience than me and I just looked at him and go, isn't that supposed to be turned the other way or it'll blow the generator? And he goes, good catch kid. And I like, just, turned, <laughs> it was like my fucking third day. Nice. Like, nice. Well, I mean, I think that's just a story about how you've never reached your full potential. Yeah, <laughs> you're, true. you're literally just gigging jobs. <laughs> you could easily probably be successful at something you put yeah. your mind into. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that! I need to be at this county committee meeting. I got Get one of the guys. Up. I got one of the one of the guys was like, I always wanted to do stand up, and I got him a, a spot on a, sh- a real show because he didn't want to do an open mic. Oh, <laughs> and he just ate it. Oh, oh yeah, dude. you should have done the open mic, bro. That's yeah. so good. So he, did you? Take hey, I got him at, on Nate Marshall show in a oh, wow. pet shop. Oh, so like shit. that's like a good crowd. That's a yeah. good crowd. And he ate it. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why I get so much joy out of that. Oh, I love it. And like I was like, I was like, dude, it's not that. But you, I, he does it. I even said I was like, you didn't do that bad because you, he actually did this thing and he did stick with it. He didn't bail. Oh, so like huge. I was like, yeah, I was yeah. like, dude, that is actually kind of huge, and you should have just done. And he was like, kind of asking me like how to do it again. Like if he, I was like, dude, go do a hundred open mics. Yes, yeah. and, and then, then talk to me, talk to me <laughs> and I'll try to get you a spot. Yeah. yeah. Like, but did he take? No, no they yeah. always give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. That's why I always. Now we're on the road more so than ever. And you probably know this too, Chris, because we've done similar gigs in the past. Those gigs, they are filled with dudes dying to be comedians. Oh. I had no idea that the crust of this country, if you will, is so uh, inclined to be funny. Every guy, there's like a three guys Dude. in every gig, Ed, we meet, that is, I want to be a comic. Get the fuck out this of my guy's face. guy's t- talking my ear off and I go, hey, man. You're standing in front of my tip bucket. You gotta fucking move. This is being a comedian. <laughs> you're buying a koozie or what? You're you buying a shirt, and if fuck. not, you gotta get fucking the- cost me money hey, right now. Hey, in Houston, fuck. though, that annoying guy, I made that guy buy a shirt. And he tipped us forty bucks, and because he was so annoying, yeah. and I got and I ripped him in the audience. Yeah, and he, yeah. We made him buy a ticket. He, oh, it felt so good. He actually, he actually was a good. He like, turned it around. Yeah, he, he turned did. it around. He he did. Did. but he when started he, as one when of those guys. When I sat him down, I go, "Hey, man, you gotta. Uh, this is not. Uh, you gotta be careful in here because he was like already chatting up the people. Oh, I was like, God. ah, fucking throw your ass out of here." <laughs> Dude, I used to, uh, when I first started, you know, um, Christian Espinal and Meg Walsh used to run a show at Local 138. It was that tiny room. It was about the size, it was like maybe a little bigger than this room. Oh, wow, room. wow. But they would bark people in and they would like get like dollar pizzas, and, like, free pizza oh, show. Yeah. But it was like just so we didn't have to do mics when we yeah, started. Yeah, yeah. And they had me hosting that a lot. And I remember there'd be people like, and I would like, I would, like if somebody was like being rude during my set, I would like tap them. Like, did you, have you always wanted to do this? And I'm like, yeah, I'd be like, if, you, if you're just quiet throughout the show, I'll put you up at the end. And like sometimes I would just leave them there. 
Oh yeah. I would just leave the bar. Oh yeah. While they were on stage. <sighs> I would literally leave. Yeah. I would I would tell That's the bartender amazing. I'll be like oh, I'm gonna go sit on my dab sh- in like 20 minutes but I'm gonna go get a beer across the street and I would just leave them or like I, yeah I would just like that's the best like it was, oh, that's, that's such the a smart best way to handle yeah. people that bother Shuts me right I would down. either I would either not bring them up at all or I would bring them up and then just leave the show yeah uh, <laughs> oh, don't man. talk about it be about it <laughs> it's just like a live grin oh yeah <laughs> all right I'll see you guys oh you want to be in a war I'll be back next week find the pin <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> What uh? What other That's crazy great. shit? Anything crazy? I feel like I, I was hoping for more crazy coming out of you, because you're kind of crazy. But that's the thing is like I like it's such a funny thing is like even when we're doing like park shows and stuff like in the during the pandemic I remember I did a show I did a Mike Feeney and Mike Cannon's podcast and they were like you have any bad ones and I go that's no, fine I'm like happy to do stuff <laughs> like, I like kind of like everything <laughs> yeah I'm good it's yeah, funny <laughs> because you really are like uh, it I don't know that this is funny because now that I'm and I'm thinking this out loud like. Uh, I don't know that I've ever met anybody who I had like, oh, this guy's going to be a hard it, but you're kind of like a sweet guy. Yeah, I yeah. like, I really do like, <laughs> like, I took the job even at the fucking dive bar and I was like, oh, I'll get like jokes out of this. They'll be like, and then like, I just like everybody that comes in. Like, they're all mostly nice. <laughs> I've thrown a couple of people out because they're dicks and then that's it. Yeah. Like, yeah. But like, it's like, it's like, no, it's fine. You know, I mean, everybody has something great. to say. You're like a guy that, that you have the vibe of no overhead <laughs> or whatever overhead you have, you have no desire to pay it like, i just like i feel like you have like no worries no i have like a good savings i, oh, I i've awesome. done i've done pretty good that's awesome with that stuff yeah oh, oh, nice. i did sell drugs when i was young oh <laughs> you did yeah well that's you get in trouble uh i got arrested a couple times but oh. uh, nothing crazy. arrested with what were we selling yeah weed? Well, i mean i got arrested with weed and i never uh-huh. got arrested with anything stronger i mean i have some stories of like really weird close calls of like i remember i had all this fucking k on me once and fucking i'm with my buddy he just got his license i did not know he's drunk and I'm like oh, why did I agree to get in this car uh-huh. and fucking I'm going to drop off this fucking K and fucking he's driving me and fucking there's Prospect Park has this circle when you come down like Coney Island and then there's a circle and like by like where the Nighthawk Theater is it's a felony it's, level of K you have on you just to be clear right? Huh? it's a felony level of oh yes okay and uh, it, it's a one way this way and he turns the wrong way and there's cops there and I go uh-huh. that's the wrong way and literally we go down this block he goes around the, there was one car between us and the cops and when the cops went, whoop, the guy behind us thought it was for him and stopped. Oh. And I was like, Chirp turn out. this corner, park illegally right there, and let's go. Because they yeah. don't know what we look like. Yeah. And I was like, we just left. And I was like, I had a couple of those. Yeah. Well, I had some like weird ones where like my buddy had like this fucking Coke dealer living in his place when he went to Pratt. And I remember like their power got turned off because it was like a bunch of college age drug addicts that were like letting this guy fucking sell fucking drugs. And I went there to like sell him. I think it was like acid or fucking something like that. And he just like comes out of the shadows with a flashlight. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, yeah, dude? Yeah, always so weird. Like, it's like, yeah, and it was just like. And it was going to be a cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> that wants and, acid at 3 a.m. in a college <laughs> dorm. No, no, no. This was a guy who sold coke. He was like, and he, but he was going to Philly with a bunch of coke. And he was just like, I may as well have other shit to flip when I get there. Oh, yeah, and yeah. acid's not big. So I could fucking hide it places. Yeah. And fucking he, but he just like came out of the shadows and was. Literally paid me in ones and fives for like six sheets of acid. Oh wow! Like, <laughs> how much is that? That's a lot, Eddie. You, six know, sheets. you know about drugs. Yeah, yeah. So what's 50, 50 hits on a sheet? Hundred. Hundred. Yeah. So what's yeah. that run you? Six hundred. Oh, I mean, at back, the time, I think I was charging probably two hundred a sheet. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so six sheets. Yeah. He's paying you all well, ones twelve hundred dollars. Ones yeah. and fives. Yeah. It took twenty five minutes to count that. <laughs> <laughs> And with never f- coming back here by with a flashlight. Yeah, by, with a flashlight. <laughs> was he holding it like, a, like you're like working a, on a car at like, night? Like, yeah, I'm like there like a dock worker. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he in the dark? Because the cops. Like, no, because no, because oh, the, where the, he was oh, working, they didn't pay the for the kids whose apartment was didn't pay the fucking lights. <laughs> fucking, he's like a, like a safe burglar. He's got- <laughs> Yeah, I got a ton of those stories. There's a bunch of those. Uh, that's great. Dude, but getting, when do they throw you when you get arrested? Just for like a couple days in the can? Like yeah, yeah. It was always like a weed thing. Like it, and like, you know, I had like a bunch of arrests for like fights and shit fucking when I was a kid. But like, it was like, I always kind of like, luckily skirted on anything that was like crazy. But like, there was one time where I was like, fucking my old apartment. I was, I actually stopped doing it because of this. Because like, I was growing shrooms in my spare bedroom and fucking the pipe <laughs> burst under it. And I'm hung over uh. in my fucking living room like this. And I fucking pipe burst under the room, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And fucking um, 
I, uh, my phone's ringing. It's my landlord's nephew. And I'm going, what the fuck is this? And I, I pick up the phone. And luckily, I can hear him yelling from outside the house. And I go, I go, oh, Jim, I'm not going to be home for a while. Just put a bucket there. I'll drain it. I'll check it throughout the night. I'll set an alarm. Don't worry about it. I'll see you tomorrow. And I, I sat there in the dark in my apartment. And as soon as I saw him drive away, I called my buddy Jay. And I was just like, get the fuck we over my house. <laughs> Yo, we got to fucking dismantle this room. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I just... <laughs> Cause he's going. He's going. You know, I, I do have the. And he didn't. They didn't realize I had changed the locks as soon as I walked. I know. Into yeah, the yeah, house. yeah. No one's coming in here. <laughs> yeah, like it's like. What are you? He's like, you know, I do have the key. I could just. And I'm like, uh, I, was, I literally go, don't go into my apartment, please. Just put a large trash can from outside under it. I will change it several times throughout the night. It will not cause any more damage than's already there. And he was like, all right. And then fucking, I just dismantled yeah. that fucking. And it was like, I was like, well, I'm never doing this again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Growing what shrooms happens is, then? Growing shrooms is hard. Man. He's either gonna want it's in on it. Growing weed. Is it? Yeah. Wait. There's no lights. Fucking. It's it's way. There's yeah, it's less. Mushrooms. It's less likely like, to die. But yeah. like the time that it takes. Right? It takes That's a little bit more time, but like there's no like like again there's no lights and there's less that can go wrong. Well, let this me ask thing. you this now. So he comes in. What's the play for him? Either he reports you, throws you out, or he wants a cut. Well, he would he would have just thrown me out of that. He just don't. Yeah, 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 I don't think he's. He doesn't sound like a guy who's gonna. Or he might have called the cops. Like you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. fucking know. It was like an old. Either thing. way, it would have been a bad yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's never good. Yeah. Although I knew some what guys who had a weed grow known? room. I knew some guys who had a weed grow room, and the marshals came in to evict them because people are stupid, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Guys, we're not cops, so we don't really care about this, and we're not going to tattle on you. But if you go pay your fucking rent, this will be over, and uh, we won't tell anybody about this. But if we come back in here because you didn't pay your rent." And this is still going on. We're calling the cops, like, and it's like I, they just dismantled that room immediately too. And it was like it was like the you know the state marshals who that's their job. Yeah, to fucking evict you. Yeah, because they're they don't want to create more work for themselves by but, trying to cross well, they, over they, to different they branches. Also, are they not actually Look, cops? You, state marshals? Well, they're not like NYPD. Like they what they can't enforce they is They don't bust you. Huh. Like they don't they don't care about a drug bust. Like they literally were like, "This is not what we're here for. We yeah. don't care about this." They're the guys that evict people. Yeah, and you're already enough of a piece of shit that you evict people. You don't want to then also get them locked up. Yeah, yeah. yeah like you yeah, probably yeah, already yeah. have some level of guilt in your sure. conscience if that's your job. You, right. Yeah, so that it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna double down on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're already right, throwing right, you right. out. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Fuck, that's crazy. I lived in a house. Uh, um, we had no, like we didn't pay any of the bills. And there was, it was that winter in Northeast Philly it was so fucking cold. And I remember the dude whose name was on the lease. He goes, we'll just steal the heat from the other town. Because it was in a townhouse situation. We'll just steal the heat from the other places. And I was like, oh, that makes that's I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, it'll just <laughs> wake up. You just see your breath. There was no like you couldn't take a shower. It was just yeah. too fucking cold. And we're, you know, just a bunch of drug addicts, sure. you know what I mean? Smoking fucking angel dust. <laughs> How do you steal heat? That's what I, he said we would absorb it through the walls. <laughs> yeah, that is some real That's angel some dust PCP conversation. shit and I logic. Was like, I was like, dude, that makes so much sense. <laughs> Give me some more of that PCP because... Your brain is working at a different level right you now. You were also, I had a friend who was like addicted to smoking PCP. What? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was the but best. It's kind of funny, though. He got clean. I remember he told me a story. He ran into a guy he used to smoke, like when fucking Oxys came out. He goes, I ran into a guy I used to smoke dust with. I was like, You still on that shit? He goes, Nah, just blues. You heard? Like, it's like, <laughs> wow, you just like swapped. Like, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Well, we like, used to do, we used to do wet and then ready rock. Like, we, it was like two corners down at Somerset Villas we would go to. We'd either get crack or. Get the wet and uh you, you never mix them not really i mean what's the point if we're gonna get rock you would just do rock that night That's fair. you know what i mean and then you would you would like hey man i'm fucking pretty crispy let's get some dust you know what I mean? it was kind of like mm -hmm. one or the other you still I mean, get sure, you still do yes, drugs we do you do definitely drugs mix do i still them. do drugs yeah 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 you still sell them no it's That's, so crispy I'm, to oh, sell. I, I'm like 40. Yeah, it's, yeah. And 43 changed a lot about me. I live with my girlfriend. I have like nieces and nephews yeah, that care about me. Like, it's different now. I, have, I, I, own, I, own, I own a couple of rental units and I uh, <laughs> bartend and I make, I'm lucky enough to make some money doing comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and right. I have some other investments that like luckily paid yeah. off and I make so a little bit of fucking. Let's not yeah. rock the boat. <laughs> yeah. I'm like luckily I have a couple of like. Here's some passive income situation. Were you That's good great. at selling drugs, though? Like, I was great at it. Oh, see, I was yeah. horrible. Anytime yeah, you, you tried to sell, I didn't know that. you were oh, a yeah. drug addict. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just like drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like an alcoholic. Right. And, like, I like cheap booze, so it's really never an issue. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, I remember, like, when I first started, like, when I was, like, 15, I'm selling weed. I was like, wait, how... 
you're saying if I buy four ounces, essentially one of them's free. And they go, yeah. And I go, all right, I just have to sell enough ounces so that I have enough money to get four. And now I'm immediately making this much more money. Yeah. And I it was just like, sense, right? and it the just math. like made, yeah. And I was like yeah. working at like my dad's restaurant also. So I was like, oh, I can get that money really quickly. Yeah. And I was like, Oh yeah, and I was just like always like, oh, but then you just get the next thing. This is exactly the the thinking that I had, <laughs> except all mine just got toasted, dude. I remember just smoked it all, <laughs> dude. I remember I gave a kid. I, my buddy of mine was working at a telemarketing office, and I got all these fucking when Newports first went up to like I think they went up to twelve dollars. I got wow. all these cartons of Newports, yeah. and I was like, dude, I'll. You need to make a little extra money. We're gonna this telemarketing office. All those guys smoke. I go. I'll give you a couple of cartons. You're not gonna make a ton of money, but you'll make. I was like, sell these for eight dollars a pack, and you'll make an extra sixty bucks in like three days. Yeah. And he just came back and was like, I don't have the money. I was like, why? <laughs> what did you do? Yeah. It's sixty dollars. Yeah. Well, how, like it's like, how can you not have this money? And he how just, is that burning a hole in your pocket for? For two days He's like well you know Like this guy's gonna give me the money It was like you gave people Cigarettes oh, on credit oh, I, I, And I'm realizing that I gave him cigarettes <laughs> yeah, yeah. On credit. <laughs> That was the funniest thing These cigarettes show up In the fucking mail My dad's like What's in this box I was like cigarettes He goes What kind <laughs> And I go I go Newports He goes Ugh. Yeah And then he just smoked Newports Until I sold all those Fucking cigarettes <laughs> There was one time I got all these fucking Viagras. My, uh, I knew a guy <laughs> who fucking uh, quit at Pfizer, but on the way out he, he cleared them. He, he cleared he them did. out, dude, oh. and they sold them all to me. And I fucking sit in my house. I told my dad I had them, <laughs> and he's in fucking at the time. He's seventy years old. He's going to play fucking poker with his buddies a couple times a week. And I get a call while he's out playing cards, and his buddy. I can say this because these guys are dead now. So yeah, it's yeah. Like, you know what I mean. They're yeah, all you're fu- safe. You know, it's fucking twenty years ago, and they were seventy. If they're still alive, more power to them. I don't think the cops are coming. For them. Uh, <laughs> fucking. So I'm sitting fucking. I uh, sitting in the house And the phone rings At the same time My dad has always Gone to play cards And I pick up the phone It's his buddy Charlie I'm like what's up Charlie he, he, You know he's playing cards Right it's fucking Tuesday And he goes Yeah yeah I called To talk to you <laughs> Weird <laughs> And I was like Alright And he goes Yeah your dad Kind of said You had some of those Viagra things <laughs> I'm just kind of Kind of curious about it <laughs> It's not for me. You think but I can get uh, a sample? I think I got so, a friend who might need it. So he was going to meet some chick <laughs> that they knew when they were like in their early 20s who like reached out to him, found him on like something. Yeah. And fucking, it wasn't, it couldn't even be on Facebook. I don't know. She looked him up. And like, I remember I wake up and I hear him, my dad talking one day and I'm, he's going, he's going, she was like an old lady, pa. And my dad goes, yeah, you fucking idiot. <laughs> we haven't seen her in 45 fucking years. <laughs> She was like an old lady. She's your age. <laughs> She's two years younger than you, and you're seven. <laughs> I got there, and those Viagras were working, but she was an old lady. Those Viagras kicked in quick, and I couldn't get out of it, even though she was an old lady. I did not expect her to be an old lady. <laughs> I took the Viagras in the car before I got in the house. I heard she was related to Walt Disney, and they had frozen her. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking knucklehead. <laughs> All right, uh, what do you got going on now? What's up? What like, what are you working on? Anything? And also, before we get you out of here, mm-hmm. what's one of the moments, a high moment in your comedy life, mm-hmm. where you had to go back to a job the next day, and it was kind of sobering, or not? All right, this is a double. This is actually a double comedy thing. Is that fine? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So one of I think it was the last Skank Fest in Brooklyn. I hosted the wrestling show. I ring announced the wrestling show. Oh wow. On the on Sunday, and like you know, I'm like four or five years into comedy, but I'm like working with the wrestling company, and I fucking obviously I do all the Skankfest stuff. I'm fucking I guess digital, and I'm sitting in the fucking ring. I'm talking about literally people are chanting my name, like fucking hundreds of people because they know you from like the Arshafir, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Arshafir's on the show. Fucking. Tony Hinchcliffe's doing time in the ring, fucking fuck, and I'm getting fucking hammered. I'm, tr- I had a stretch because the fucking athletic commission's giving the fucking promoters shit in the back for the fucking wrestling shit because they're like, I, you guys are saying there's gonna be a fight, and they're trying to like convince him that Lewis isn't actually fighting Mike Harrington, and fucking we're fucking, uh, like, so I'm just chugging beers with fans in the ring to fucking kill time. <laughs> and I'm doing ch- chugging. Because you're three years in, you're like, I used all my material. I gotta get. Fucked it's also up. like I had also been. At the festival all weekend, oh, so yeah, I'm like yeah. hung over out of my yeah. fucking face, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like, so I'm sitting there, I'm like, but I'm doing stuff, and I'm like, I'm talking about, I had to stretch. They told, I remember, I remember looking at Tony, and they told Tony, like, can you do 25? And he was like, 
he looked at me and I was like, just look at me when you're done talking and I will get back in the ring and figure out how to stretch this. I'm also wearing a suit. I can't do my stupid goon material. Oh, yeah, so yeah. I'm like doing like wrestling gimmick looking show shit. And like, you know, I, but like it's fucking, but like, so I'm having this, I had a blast. Dan Soder comes up to me afterwards. He goes, dude, you did a fantastic job at that. I don't think anybody here could have done a better job than you with this. And I start to go, no, I think Dan, you probably could. And he goes, shut the fuck up. You did the best job of anybody here could have done at that at that job. Oh, man, that must have been That's awesome. Huge. It was awesome. And then yeah. the next day, I was barking for a show in front of No Fun Bar on Ludlow Street. <laughs> and uh, 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 had Coke sweats. And, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, hung over and the Coke sweats. <laughs> <laughs> If why did I just stay home? <laughs> that's why, I wasn't getting paid. That's not the fucking the carriage turning back into the pumpkin. Oh, I don't know God what it is. God <laughs> damn. Comedy show? Comedy? Ah, comedy show. I love it. All right, plug where you're at so everyone can find you. Uh, yeah, go uh, at Chris from BKLYN on Twitter and Instagram. Go check out uh, High Society Radio and Notes of a Goon. Those are my podcasts. And uh, I think... I'm opening for Justin Silver a bunch over the next couple months at the Dojo of Comedy next month. I'm in Minnesota with Rob Bernstein on the Summer Porch Tour, 22nd of June. And when does this come out? June 4th. June 4th. Yeah, just follow my social media. Yeah, I have a bunch of dates there. coming up. It should be uh, it's a good summer. Sweet. Mm. Nice. At Josh Cardo, joshcardo.com for tour dates. Our next tour date. Uh, I will be in Wallingford. Ed will not. But after that, we'll be in... Seattle uh, in July, yeah. and then we'll be in Hartford the next month, and then after that we will be in Rhode Island. So, pay attention. Nice. Follow me on uh, Instagram Ed McGowan Comedy. Go to edmcgowan dot com. See my dates. Uh, email us any of your uh, job stories. Uh, if you ever got busted selling mushrooms or growing mushrooms, just email us at workingclasscomedians at gmail dot com. Oh, real quick. Uh, this is actually perfect for your audience. Uh, Mike Harrington put together a show. If you're going to the police convention in Atlantic City on June 16th. Come to the comedy show. You get 50% off if you're a cop. Awesome. Yo, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Nice. I love cool. That. We'll see you guys again next week. See you. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 